Okay, so I thought it would be fun to do a, a video on how I sew in toe plugs. Um, toe plugs are the little funny shaped wedge of leather that gets sewn onto the bottom of some holsters like that. That work as a floor for the holster. Now, obviously, this helps seal up the bottom to keep garbage and dirt from getting into your uh, into your gun. But I think more importantly, what it does is it helps the holster keep its shape down here at the bottom. Um, because if you don't use a toe plug, you're either going to, well, you're either going to leave it open like that, or you're going to sew it up. And the holsters that I that I make that have toe plugs in them, uh, they're just a little bit quicker, for lack of a better term, uh, because it, well, when you have a holster that's sewn up, when you put your gun in, the barrel gets kind of wedged down here at the bottom, where the, the leather is kind of being pinched together. And without it, with the toe plug in, it's just, uh, you don't have that resistance to it. Um, and plus, I think toe plugs just look nicer, in my opinion. So I was going to show you how I do that. These can be kind of tricky. Now, I've got a holster here that I've already done all the, um, the dyeing on. I've done the weathering. I've went ahead and stitched up the, the main seam here. And I've left probably about two and a half feet worth of thread uh, for me to work with, to do the, the toe plug with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I, I do this. So what I what I typically do is I sew up as far as I... I basically sew up as far as I can go. Because one of the issues that, that you have, the challenges with the toe plug, is that while... I had the hole was already pre-punched here. I did that while it was still flat. Unfortunately, you can't use a machine to sew these with. What I have to do is I have to get all these stitches into that groove. I've already went ahead and cut the groove. So you've got less real estate. You've got less room to make all these stitches in. So these stitches are going to have to be smaller than the stitches outside on the holster. So I try to bring these stitches up as much as I can so I have fewer stitches out here to sew in. So what I'm going to do is I typically sew up like that and I leave a, a little bit of room down here at the bottom and I leave a, a section of threads like that. What that does is that helps create like a little shelf there of thread that keeps this little point pointed in from getting pulled down, which I've noticed will happen. So, so it's going to be like that. But the first thing I do is I glue it in. Uh, I've got my Eco Weld here. I love this stuff. It lasts a long time. But this is one of the main things I use it for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and this is technically a contact cement. But I'm not putting it on both sides. I'm just, just going to put it around here. Just like that. Don't be stingy with it. Now, The main thing you want to do here is you want to keep it flush. Um, I use this old uh, rawhide mallet to kind of act as a backer if I shove it in there a little too much. And again, I'm just trying to, the goal here is to keep, keep it flush.
that's good. And uh, go ahead. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess glue. Don't worry too much about it. Because that, that glue can be rubbed off later. The main goal here is we just want it in place so it doesn't shift around us when we're using our awl and our needles and thread. Okay, so I'm gonna set that off to the side and um, let that dry. This is an old um, rubber glue uh, I think it is. It's an old rubber rubber cement uh, eraser or something like that. I'm not sure where I got this from, but it works really good with pulling off that that contact cement any excess. Okay. All right. So we're gonna have we got that glued in, and we're gonna set that off to the side. To let it dry and then we'll be back okay so the glue is dried and the first thing I need to do to start on this is I need to get the string here on this right side through the left side up out of the toe plug and then back down into the next open hole on my left side here because um, we're going to be saddle stitching this all the way around here you need a good sharp awl and i'm just going to go through the first hole over here and what i do is i get it just just it like that. <clears throat> now, you might not be able to see this, but my target is this groove here. And I only need a hole big enough to get the thread through. I don't push the awl all the way through because that would simply make the hole too big. Um, and I'm going to be doing this all, all along the plug here. So if you can see, and I don't know if I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but I push it through until I can just see the very tip of my awl. And that's that's all you need. And so I pull it out. Take my needle and push it through. Now, I'm going to flip around. I need to make the hole on the next side here. So I'm trying to get all this into the camera shot. It's a little difficult. Same thing on this side. Again, I don't know if you can see it. Just until I can very see the very tip top. <clears throat> and what I often do is I go ahead and take the needle and I'll punch it through. To go ahead and start that hole. Watch around, I grab that. Okay. There you go. Again, you're going to go up and over. First stitch. Right. Yeah. 
again. Now you're just saddle stitching. Okay. So saddle stitching. You got two strings, two different needles. There's lots of videos on how to do it. <clears throat> So, as I go around, what I'm going to be doing is you're going to have a bias kind of towards the back here. As you go through, you're not going to just go straight on like this, like you would normally do. You're going to, it's going to be more towards that. You're going to keep kind of, keep the all kind of pointing towards the, towards the back here. Otherwise, you'll run out of room. Remember, your your stitches in your plug are going to be smaller than the stitches that you have out here. And what I do... I'm going to do it really carefully. My, my all is sharp, but I'm doing it really slow because what I'm looking for is that, that little tiny bulge that will show up just before... Pierces through. There it goes. Again, I don't push the all, all the way through. I do it until you just see the very tip of it. That's all you need. And then pull it out. stitch next hole there it is. just see the tip of the all taking them using the pliers to help push the, the needle through because I'm not going up like I said, I'm not going through the entire length of the awl, so it does create some resistance. It's a slow, tedious process. Unfortunately. But essentially you're you're just saddle stitching all the way around. And as I go through, I kind of aim, what I tend to do is I kind of aim towards the inside edge of the groove here. Just to And then length of your stitches on this part can really make or break you, I've found. If your stitches are too big on this first part, you'll find that you're quickly going to run out of room, especially when you get around here to this, this front area. See it start to pop out the, the wrong way or not in a spot that you want to, you can always back it out. Camera's having a hard time 
staying focused on this. This is also the part where I end up breaking a lot of needles. It's just a lot of torque put on them. I'm trying to get it shoved through. Making your way. Focusing on it. I'll speed this up for you. Occasionally you'll find a really spongy part of the leather. That's what I just found right here on this one. Just it, it's really soft and I have to be careful. And I have to be careful not to pull the, the stitch too tight or else it'll tear out. So that, that section of leather is really soft right there. In general, you're wanting to uh, you're wanting to be pretty light on these stitches. You don't want to kill them. Gonna end up going through. Oh, my light went out. Right, back on. You still with me? All right. Oh. Lost my light. All right. That's right. Okay. That last thread, you're going to end up going through the first hole that you went up and over with. And usually, what I'll typically do is I'll, <clears throat> on the last one here, I'll shove through. Actually, I like to end it on the end it on the back side. There we go. Okay, so that last stitch I'll end up pulling through Over there. Oh. What I typically do I'll 
I'll seize those last couple of stitches with a drop of the liquid super glue. It's your friend. And I take and I pull it taunt tight as I can. And hopefully they can pull it back in. Okay. There you have your sewn in toe plugs. This one's And then what I what I'll do is I'll uh, I always end up dressing things up. So it looks good. Put some gun track on it. Because what will happen is that even though you glued it in, the um, the plug will often, just because of all the manipulation you've done to it, it'll get kind of pushed up on the edges. And I always just end up going through and going over it to make sure it was... Make sure it's flush. Sorry if I'm going off camera a little bit. It's just sometimes I give it a little push right there. A little, I like mine to have I like mine to have a little bit of a concave look to it. your finished toe plug. The outside here. Always go over stuff with your overstitch wheel. So there you go. Okay. So you got one of those situations that's not if it happens, but when it's going to happen. Um, I've got a new holster here. I'm sewing in the toe plug and it's looking pretty good until I get up here. And I'm realizing that I've run out of room. And I know what the problem is. The, the issue is that I, I misjudged the length of the stitches here. I made them too long. I should have made them a tad bit shorter because now I've got all the way around to here. And my next hole, if I follow it, is going to put me way off. I'm going to have to go way off at an angle right here. What I need to do is I need to 
skip a couple of stitches. What you do is put the next hole right there and go through that hole. But I still got these two stitch holes here. So, man, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna show you what I do. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna skip those two stitches here. Through there. All right, so got my stitch here, but now the problem is you have this ridiculously long stitch here. And that's all right. First thing I'm gonna do, make sure that stitch where it goes into the top is tight. I'm gonna pull this taut. So that's what I've got there. Now, here's what I do. I've got anything will work for this. Um, I use a little, oh, what is that? That's a really tiny drill bit. But anything that you can use, give yourself a little bit of slack. Let's see if I can get this on camera. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to push that there. Do another one. Push that into there. Like so. And you got some stitches. And what I'm going to do. Take my liquid super glue, it's liquid super glue, and I'm gonna just dab drop in there, dab drop in there. I'm gonna seize those snaps in there. No one is the wiser, and it's okay because these these stitches aren't structural. Um, you know, these these are just to to keep the toe plug in. You're never gonna have anything that's trying to pull apart these two surfaces here. But anyways, uh, that's how I, I deal with skip stitches when you need to. And I'll just keep along. And you can do that as many times as you need. Can, the tub plug is still sewed in. It's fine. But you're just got a couple of false stitches there. Let's see where it is. Just like that. And now... You see I'm back on track. Anyways, thought I'd share that with you.